Sarah is my wife who we've been married 12 years and she's been my, uh, my anchor. Just over four years ago we had Samuel, our first son, and his middle name is Helm, which is what I named the boot company after. Uh, the first style we did was the Samuel, uh, and then we've always kept the names in the family. All the styles are named after those people in the now because the, the brand's uh, grown and there's a lot of styles. We're naming them after close friends and other local business owners and entrepreneurs, people that, uh, that embody the brand uh, in their work and in their passion. I always have loved and loved wearing work boots, uh, but they're heavy and they're, uh, they don't breathe well. And lifestyle-wise, in a work boot, is hard. Um, so I wanted to make a work boot for the film guys, for the photographers, all the friends I have, all my creative working class heroes that nodded to the classic heritage of, of old and that our grandfathers wore when they worked on cars or worked in factories. Um, but I wanted us to be able to wear something like that that defined us and defined our uh, sweat, blood, and tears. In the very beginning it was uh, having spent some time in Israel seeing uh, a lot of their uh, younger people that are in the military there wearing these Israeli paratrooper boots that have this canvas on the shafts, not unlike a, a US military boot, um, but these, to me, teenagers, these kids carrying their rifles out at the club at night or out at dinner in their military boots. And something about that became attractive to me in a fashionable sense. What I'll do is take a boot like that and then I'll find something that's like a favorite dress shoe with this toe that I saw uh, from Australia or this, this work boot. And I'll take the heel from that and the shaft from this and this last and uh, extend it to this height and uh, maybe try to trim the sides up. Like it, it's, I don't know, it's probably a six or seven step process of taking five or six of my favorite styles and melding them, uh, but making sure that it's not Frankenstein. <laughs> and that sounds crazy, but it, it works um, because we often end up with something that's uh, really cool. I looked into the US in the beginning and price points were so high, but as the company's grown um, and the price points have developed, I've been able to bring it to the US. Just spending time up on the East Coast in these old rundown industrial cities where there are these beacons of light and beacons of hope of production in the US is invaluable to me. I mean, it's just, there's so much history. And for something like that to be lost, because we have people more concerned about the growth of the bottom line, so they're outsourcing. For these 50, 60, 70, 80 people that work there, whose families have always worked there, whose kids are gonna work there, can we help that factory sustain and continue to grow? Man, I'll do everything we can to do that. So that's real, it's become real important to me. This isn't like paying taxes, this is like supporting my, uh, my people, <laughs> my blood. Wait, I can make my shoes in the U.S.? Hell yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that as long as the company's here. And I'm going to employ U.S. people that need to be employed. Why wouldn't I? We don't make thousands and thousands and thousands of pairs of each thing of Helm. It's like they're numbered. This is one of a kind. Uh, we put your name on it when you order it on your hang tag. Here's the care instructions. This is your piece of helm history delivered to you. Um, if it fits, make it part of your foot, not just part of your wardrobe, make it part of your lifestyle, uh, not just another shoe in the closet. <laughs>